everybody, Dr. Ryan here, board certified specialist physician. Thank you so much for joining us. Even as we look at our 52nd uh, episode in the OSCE series, we're talking about abdominal pain today. And uh, hope you're well. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button, like and share. Thank you so much. Okay, so in this particular case, Vinette, we have a youngster, a 16 year old <clears throat> girl who presents with intermittent episodes of lower colic abdominal pain for the last six months, so it's chronic. In the interim, she has lost almost 6.4 kilograms of weight. Wow, quite significant. Her, her appetite was not impaired, strangely enough. There is no history of diarrhea, although the patient has complained of intermittent constipation and abdominal bloating. Mm -hmm. The patient is English in origin. She has no family history of note. She has last traveled abroad to Barbados on a holiday a year ago. Now, the only significant past medical history includes a short history of painful ankles associated with a circular erythematous skin lesion. On examination, she's thin and has mild clubbing. Heart rate was in 90 beats per minute and regular. Blood pressure 155, so systolic, but low, diastolic as well. There's evidence of uh, Bexil Kamet Guerin BCG scar on inspection of the left upper arm. Both heart sounds were normal and the chest is clear. Abdo exam reveals vague tenderness affecting the hypogastrium and the right iliac fossa. Investigations are shown. I'm sorry for the typos here, guys. A couple of typos. Um, these are investigations, right? So, hemoglobin 10, so she's anemic. I didn't give you the mean cell volume. White cell count is normal, platelets normal, ESR are slightly up at 55, U and E, UGI and electrolytes are normal. Um, aspartate immunotransferase, alanine immunotransferase within normal limits, bilirubin is normal, albumin is 33, which is good, stool calcium negative, chest x ray, you find minor calcification, very few peripheral lymph nodes. Okay, what's the diagnosis? Is it sarcoidosis, intestinal lymphoma, intestinal TB, Crohn's disease, or IBS? The answer here is going to be Crohn's disease, and we we'll speak about this. So she presented with abdominal cramps, weight loss, erythematidosum, which were those circular erythematous skin lesions, and raised inflammatory markers, all speaking loudly in terms of inflammatory bowel disease. Right? That constellation of symptoms and signs should make one think about you know, inflammatory bowel disease. Now, tenderness in the right iliac fossa always points to the possibility of uh, ileal disease, terminal ileal disease. This could be TB of the bowel as well, but most commonly Crohn's disease. Uh, and diarrhea is not always a prominent feature when it comes to Crohn's. It's unlikely ileocecal TB because she had a BCG scar which speaks to some kind of immunity that she may have acquired against TB from that vaccination. Uh, Sarcoid enteropathy is extremely rare and usually sarcoidosis is accompanied by other features, the skin features, right? Together with the, you know, arthralgia, the reticular endothelial system enlargement like hepatosomenomegaly, you got cardiac involvement sometimes with bradycardia, you got ophthalmological uh, involvement, you got um, acid meningitis, you got dysphalangeal bony cysts. There's other features you look for in the context of sarcoidosis. <clears throat> Small bowel lymphoma often features diarrhea, which wasn't a prominent feature in this particular case. In uh, irritable bowel syndrome, <clears throat> raised inflammatory markers are against us because in IBS, it's a diagnosis of exclusion and it's not inflammatory in nature. Okay, so this is a beautiful <clears throat> slide taken from Calgary Guide. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful resource. I love looking at the material. Uh, it's a very good pictorial representation of uh, pathophysiology behind a uh, multitude of conditions. So inflammatory bowel disease, looking at clinical findings in Crohn's, as we know, nobody really knows what causes Crohn's disease, but we know it's linked with certain behavioral factors, genetic susceptibility and environmental triggers. There's inflammation of the GI tract lining. The key word when it comes to Crohn's versus ulcerative colitis is that Crohn's is transmural. It spans the entire thickness of the intestinal wall from the laminal mucosa, or luminal mucosa, sorry, through to the serosa. And the inflammation is not uh, continuous. It occurs in skip lesions, Anywhere throughout the GI tract from the oral mucosa to the anal mucosa, from the gums to the bum, <laughs> in a skin, typical skip lesion pattern. Prominent features clinically is weight loss, <clears throat> anemia, diarrhea, and these patients also can have anal fistulae, which are so called holes which connect the anus to the skin, right? Bladder, peritoneum, small bowel. And you can also have anal abscesses, in inflammatory masses, abdominal cramping, and pain, right? You can also have IBD associated arthritis, which is arthropathy. Right uh, um, now, very important to note that in the context of, context of arthropathy, this peripheral spinal involvement parallels the bowel activity, but the spinal arthritis does not. We we'll say that one more time: the peripheral arthritis parallels the bowel activity, 
uh, of the IBD, but the spinal arthritis does not, right? Skin, we can have numerous manifestations, including erythematodosum, pyodermic ganglionosum, we can have canker sores in the mouth, more than five by definition. In the eyes, we have uveitis, iritis, steritis, and the liver. There's a link between uh, UCS, lerosing cholangitis, not Crohn's. Anyway, <clears throat> the book of Zephaniah, chapter 317 says, God is always, and I love this, whenever we see the word always or never, we have to take very, very specific note of what proceeds and what precedes. God is always silently planning for us in love. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you, uh, his love. He will no longer rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with singing. If you are God's child, then I want to tell you that God loves you and he looks out for you. He makes provision for you. He is a gracious and a compassionate God, full of uh, mercy, slow to anger, and he takes great delight in you. Imagine God singing over you. Yes, that is what God does. What a wonderful God we serve. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll see you soon. Here are my references. God bless you.